The Ordinary Discussion Podcast. A burning bush would do it for me. Like if a burning bush was like a middle of nowhere talking to me, I'd be like, okay, got it. Welcome back to the Ordinary Discussions podcast. I get to do the intro today. I'm so excited. Uh, we have an amazing show today. Uh, but before we get back into it, we're going to need you to do a couple of things for us. Number one, rate us on whatever your listening platform is. Uh, that helps us get this word out. Uh, like, follow, share, subscribe, do all of those good things because we don't want you to miss out on what we have to share with you every week. So do that now. And Jeremy, you ready? I I am. What am I supposed to say? I, am I allowed to say it? You know what? I think I want you to say it this time. Let's do this. <laughs> there you go. I like it. Let's do this. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Aaron. Uh, I'm super happy to have you do the intros. I I really suck at those. Hey, I don't. I wouldn't say that. I would. I would only bring positivity to it and say I'm just excited to give it a try. You know, to 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 try it out. Like could be could be my thing. Could be your thing. We'll see. No, no, I yeah. think I'm volunteering you for now on to do the intros. Uh, All right, I, vol- I volunteer. They were like my least favorite thing because I always felt like I was like, I don't know, I didn't feel very natural doing them. Like, but you I did. You sounded life? excellent. You sounded really good. Yeah, man. Well, I'm happy to serve in that way. How about that? that would be great. Great. Uh, what's new with you this week, man? Oh, man. What is new with me? I'll tell you what, I'm tired. I almost canceled the podcast today. No, you can't I, do that. I didn't get much sleep. All right, so here's the deal. I'm going to sound like a softie. I'm just going to – this whole podcast is going to be me being vulnerable. Oh, I like it. All right, so guys, get ready. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, put in the comments how many times you think I'll tear up uh, during this podcast. <laughs> we can do a little counter. We can do a little tear, a tear up counter. Oh, gosh. That might be too distracting. No. Uh, so – It's funny. So I have this dog that we got. He's seven, eight months old. I always try to act like that. I don't don't really like having a dog because I push back on getting one, but I actually really like this dog, right? I finally started giving in to tell the kids I actually like him. (laughs) There for a while, I was like, life was better without him. And deep down inside, I'm like, I really like this dog. Um, So his name's Tate. Super cute. Uh, Wes, I'm going to send you some videos so you can edit it in so so people can see Tate. But he went to jump up on the bed last night around 1030 and he fell and he's only like 10 pounds. He's just tiny. He's a little dog. He's called a Havanese and he fell. I didn't think anything of it. I was kind of, I kind of laughed at him because he missed the, missed the jump. And then he was like there for a second and a second later he starts whimpering and crying. And I thought he just wanted on the bed and I was like, screw that dog. (laughs) He ain't getting on this bed. And then I looked down and he's all curled up. And he did something to his back leg, and he literally, like, like, he would not put it on the ground. Anytime he touched it, he would wince. He looked like he was going into shock, like he was breathing real oh heavy. He was like, gosh. so this is, like, at 1030 at night. So then, like, an hour later, we finally, you know, get – we're trying to find a vet, this, that. Uh, my wife couldn't sleep, which then, of course, I couldn't sleep. She was upset. And here's what's funny. So, anyhow, we, we, this morning, I had, an o, I had an OM leader's breakfast this morning, and the vet opened at 830, so we were there first thing in the morning. And so, um, for once I was a good husband, I, I went to the vet with my wife because she was upset and I wanted to be there to support yeah. her. You know, nor- in the past I would have been like, not my dog, handle it. I'm about the Lord's work. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Deal with you. But okay. So here's the funny part of it. And I, and I wonder if people listening to this podcast would relate. It's not that I care more for my dog and it's not that I care more about my dog being hurt than my kids. But let's just say if Caden, my son fell down the stairs and hurt his leg, I'd be upset for him. Like I would care more, but I wouldn't be like, like emotionally, like this puppy looking at me that can't talk. He's all cute and furry, like brown eyes. Looks like he's crying. Like, it, it like ripped my heart out, right? But I was thinking wow. if that was my son, I'd just be like, uh, okay, well, we'll go to the doctor in the morning. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, take some ibuprofen. Like, you know, I mean, just be like, I would care, but I wouldn't be like, <laughs> like tore that up. That surprises me. That but surprises this, me. This little dog, this little dog. I was like, so. Haters, Haters got your heartstrings, man. Man, he does. I'll take, I'll take. So, yeah. Is this referred to Tater Tot? Uh, I, I said I was going to call him tater tot, but I never do. I just call him nah, Tate. This doesn't feel right. Well, yeah. don't, that's a cliffhanger, man. Is, is Tate okay? Like what's going on? Yeah, he died. 
No. No, they think it's just soft tissue damage. So it just makes him oh, a really okay. big, wimpy dog. <laughs> yeah, and also, like, you probably could have waited till the morning. But, you know, like... No, no, least... we waited till the morning. It was just, okay. we were off researching it, and then you're, like, talking, and my uh, wife was... You like, never look up things. It could be the word, oh, they fell off the bed, now they have some disease that's they're never going to come back from. Well, they were like little dogs can have like they can puncture their, <laughs> their intestines. And yep. I was like, and oh, you're great. like, yeah, I'm gonna exactly. wake up in the morning. This dog's gonna be dead. And my wife is gonna flip the lid. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it sure all worked out. I think I think it all worked out. But mm-hmm. um, by the way, I wanted to name him Meatball, but nobody would let me name him Meatball. Tate is cuter than Meatball. Mm, meatball would be funny though. It would be funny. It do gets you, funny. Do you have a dog? I don't even know. Yeah, you do. I you do. Have, His do. name is. Yes. His name is Chase Haynes Rayford. Like, he has a middle name. Oh, wow. What's the Haynes stand for? I, my son just decided that it's one day, like, oh, his middle name is Haynes. Like, the underwear? And he's like, yeah, Chase Haynes. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Perfect. So it fits him. Like, he's a gentleman, golden retriever. Um, he's old. I think he's, like, seven now. And he's just pretty much lays around and doesn't do anything helpful. But I well, think that's, that's just middle age. Do. That's just middle age for a retreat. I mean, he'll make it 12, 14, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do remember Lord you have a dog because you, you traveled with that dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, when yep, you were in the RV. RV. Mm-hmm. That dog is the I, – I mean, let me know if your dog is more well-traveled than mine. I think mine has been to like 40 states or something like that. That's pretty impressive for his – I feel like I give him a good life. Well, Tate Tate is seven months old, and he's been on the plane three times so far. So, I don't so, know. I mean, I'm I'm starting to think maybe Tate's going to catch him. We'll see. See, little we'll dogs see are great. That. You just put them in a bag, and then you pay like seventy five or hundred bucks, and they just go That's, under your seat. I always look at those people weird, like. Oh, me too. You? Trust me, I still do. <laughs> now you're the guy. No, when we when we get on because the, there's four of us, right? So yeah. there's it's always three seats. It's either two or three seats. So I always choose to set away <laughs> from the talk. I don't want to be like, a part of the If this thing starts either. barking or it starts yeah. peeing or pooping, like I no, am not going to be associated with this thing. Nope. Or throw That's it your up because they don't fly good. Oh, yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Well, sorry you had to deal with that. Oh, um, it's fine. That's, it's fine. That's bad news. I do have some good news, though. Let's hear it. Some good news is we have some comments from our last podcast. Oh, we do. So we got people, people tapping in. And we, we got to give them a shout out because we said, hey, comment and we're going to give you a shout out if you do. So we had a couple comments we can read. And the first one is from Nikki Greenfield, I think is how you say her name. I'm not sure if I say it wrong, then sorry. She says, I'm excited about the new format. I love it. I love it that this new guy can finish Jeremy's sentences. That's me. And she says, that's how you know it's going to work. So uh apparently that's a vote for yes i should stay on the podcast she also mentions a water aerobics video but i'm not sure what that means uh also we have ryan gray he says thanks for the invite to mexico guys and i feel like there's a little bit of saltiness in there oh Maybe not. he was like calling, oh i thought he was like saying Unless, oh yeah that's not good yeah, he was mad. you know what? Ryan, you know Ryan what? was mad. We need to redo the Mexico trip, water aerobics and all, and everyone's invited. This is an inclusive podcast. Oh, did you guys hear that? I was actually looking up the old podcast. It started to play. I heard it. Yeah, I wanted to see well, these this is, comments. This is the thing. I'd say this is an inclusive podcast that from now on, everyone's invited to Mexico. So if we go, it's going to be an ordinary ordinary Mexico trip and everyone can come. So no one feels left out. So we got you, Ryan next time. But the thing is, I, I don't plan to go back to Mexico. Well, okay. Well, Ryan, I'll, I'll invite you to Mexico. <laughs> I, I enjoyed Mexico. So maybe, maybe we go back. Well, that's cool. I love comments. I, I saw a couple, I think I made a couple too, um, about the lack thereof of a water aerobics video. I, I think we just got to stop talking about that. I think so too, because it's just, it's going to get people's hopes up. It's difficult to find and it it would take a lot of prayer and, you know, research. So I'm really good at 
YouTube apparently because I'm on it right now and I cannot find a comment and I know they're there because I saw them for some reason. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's okay. Technology. Well, that's cool, Aaron. I'm glad that you brought that up. Yep. Yeah, there it is. So keep commenting. Keep commenting. Uh, If you're listening, give us a comment. Let us know. And we're going to shout out comments when we get them. So hopefully we get some more. Here's Here's something for people to comment on. Is it weird for the guy that's on the podcast to make a comment about himself? <laughs> Cause I see this comment from, from the Rayfords, which is Aaron. And he says, who is this guy? He looks like he just woke up and got out of bed. Dude, that's messed up. Yeah, That's like that's talking about up. yourself in the third person. That's really dude, weird. Whoever, dude. Wrote that, whoever wrote that comment, that's messed up, man. I did not just get out of bed. I always look like this. Yeah. You wrote that about yourself. That's weird. That's like talking to the third person. You are a yeah. weird, you're a weird person apparently. And we're not giving any uh, airtime to negative comments like that. So whoever did that, forget <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. We do not read negative comments. If you got something negative, just don't even post it. <laughs> We only want we positive. censor all the comments. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's get into this thing. What are we going to talk about today? I think that we have a hint. First of all, we have a handful of things to go over because uh, I know that you want to get to some stuff that has been on your heart. Um, just a quick update from me. Uh, I'm having a little bit of OM withdrawals. Um, my group ended. I finished the year of leading my group and there's a lot of fruit from that year. I'm excited to see what God's going to do. But now I'm at that point from leading a group where the leader finishes. And then now the call is on these participants and these guys that went through. And so now I'm praying about, okay, what does it look like for me next year? How do I encourage them to lead? And maybe they're dealing with some of the things I dealt with when I was getting ready to lead is, Do I obey this call that I feel like God's put on my life? Do I feel qualified to lead yet? Have I achieved a certain level of, uh, you know, spiritual success, if you will, um, to be equipped for this? And I dealt with a lot of, I guess, doubts at first uh, when I was approaching that. So I'm praying through that and I miss my guys. So I may just jump back in and lead another group, but, you know, either way, I just want to keep the train going. But um, I was thinking about it and you brought it up too, but I think a lot of people have doubts when they, when they start to kind of step into that it might be from the enemy, honestly, or whether we get in our own heads about qualification or not qualification. But did you experience any of that when you first, well, really stepped out to do it and what were your thoughts on it? Oh, for sure. I mean, that, I think that's one of the reasons that um, I wanted to walk out the vision that God put on my heart around ordinary movement ordinary men at the time <clears throat> because I had let that lie uh, become so real in my life that it, it kept me from taking the steps that I knew he was calling me to take. So when I finally had this, this uh, revelation vision of what God was putting on my heart, it was, it was like, man, this was, this was kind of uh, in order to address a lot of things in my life. <clears throat> Sorry guys. Um, but I think it also, is very germane to a lot of people's walk. And, and you know, I mean, uh, one of the reasons we're having this podcast is because I had a little episode of that <laughs> this last week. And like I said, we're going to be, I was going to be vulnerable this week. Um, it was interesting. I was talking to Alex, our new director of operations, which is killing it, Alex. Alex is killing it. Alex. I mean, I mean, you talk about a great hire, man. I'm so, so excited for what Alex is doing to, to move us forward. And the things that I don't have to do now, it's so great, Aaron. I mean, all those mundane little things that just ate me alive. I'm now yes. able to like think visionary again and, and think big. And so it, it's, it's yeah. really going to be great for, for ordinary movement. But I was talking to him. I, I was working out last week listening to a sermon by uh, Craig Rochelle. And he's Life Church. I think they say it's the largest church in America because I think they count their online presence in that. And, and you know, I, I believe, uh, I'm almost positive, they came up with the, the Bible app. Uh, yeah, they did. Our, yeah. They did. And so it's pretty amazing that a church built that out. And so they're very, uh, they're very good at growth models. Um, the, the church itself, uh, uh uh, Craig has a podcast on leadership. He's a he's a very he's a very solid leader. He's a great uh, uh, presenter, preacher. You know, he can get like what would take me three hours to say, and he can dwindle it down into thirty five minutes and just hit it home. And um, 
yeah, he's 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 just got he's the whole he's the whole he's the whole package, and the, and their church uh, really gets it done. So here I am listening to this sermon, which was really great, and um, I know you said I don't know if it's an attack from Satan that makes us doubt or ourselves, but I would think it has to be Satan because it's a lie. And he's the yeah. he's the yeah, yeah. you know the chief of all lies, right? And so, um, so I this this dialogue started in my head as I was on the elliptical, which was like, we're really building, we're really building a whole system process movement <laughs> around. You don't build a movement, um, you call you walk out a movement, but bu- building this organization around a vision that God put on my heart. And out of a bunch of stuff that I wrote, like, really? Mm-hmm. Like, who? Like, honestly, like, this is silly. Like, th- this should be being done by Life Church or Life Point Church or some some great pastor or great speaker or somebody that's eloquent. And, and, I mean, as stupid as that sounds, because anybody that's been through Ordinary Men or Ordinary Women knows that excuses are no excuses one of our sessions. What a failure is one of our sessions. Ordinary mm-hmm. Men women throughout the word of God is, is a, is a very common theme. I mean, really ordinary men, ordinary movement, ordinary women. I, I got it used to saying ordinary movement. You can tell I'm trying I keep trying to remind yeah. myself cause this is new, but ordinary movement is built around the premise that God uses ordinary people uh, to advance his kingdom in mighty ways. And at the same time, I know that the vision that God put on our heart for, to, to start ordinary movement was around that, that very principle. And yet I'm the one, leading it right and founded it Mm. and i'm three and a half years later on a treadmill not a treadmill uh, on an elliptical i don't run (laughs) on an elliptical distinction yeah it is clear yes i want to be clear i don't want to false advertise here um thinking why would god why would we ever do this This is silly like I, i i was so I was questioning like why God would ever build something around something that he gave me versus why wouldn't he give it to somebody that's like already amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. And because you guys can listen to this podcast and know that I speak from the heart and, and, and I, and I, you know, I'm sincere, but I'm not the greatest communicator in the world. And that's not me trying to be false, false humility. It's just, I am who I am and I, and and that's fine. But at the same time, you guys have listened to other people that are just very eloquent and great at communicating. And so I'm just thinking this through and I said it to Alex and he was like, man, you should do a podcast on that. I said, really? He said, yeah, there's probably, uh, 90% of the people that go through the process of ordinary movement are dealing with this very thing. And it's probably the very thing that's keeping a lot of people from stepping out in leadership. And I thought, mm-hmm. yeah, if I, if me sharing this issue that I had last week with the ordinary community helps someone realize that um, there's never a point that you just get there and you're like, yeah, God, I know why God's using me. Cause I, cause mm. I'm the guy, right? Like I don't, if we ever get there, shame on us. Right. Yeah. But it just doesn't yeah. happen. And even, even I'm the one leading the charge and I'm having these doubts. And so I mm-hmm. think it's a constant thing that we have to remind ourselves of uh, on a regular basis that he calls us because we are ordinary and we shouldn't expect him to use someone else because they look extraordinary. And so we need to stop sitting back and saying, well, I would lead a group, but there's no way that God's going to want, I mean, there's, there's X, Y, Z guys that should be leading groups, not me. You know, why would God mm-hmm. want to use me? And, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the same thing that I was dealing with. And, and I think it's something we need to address. Yeah, I agree. I think of Moses. Um, when I think about this, I don't remember if we talk about it or not. I'm sure we do. We do. Um, actually, yeah. There's, there's, there's a whole, there's a whole list of, of, of the men, um, at least in the ordinary men book where it's, you know, you got Gideon, you got, you know, he was hiding, you know, when God uh, called him. Uh, yeah, and he, he, calls him, he calls him, uh, he calls him, he calls him mighty like, hey, warrior. Mighty man, yeah. like, mighty man of valor. And he's like, what? Me? Yeah. <laughs> like, I love that. Uh, um, you Moses, like Moses is walking around and sees a burning bush and dude, like still like God calls him gives him these signs, these, this clear, a lot of times we ask for a sign, God, give me cl- clarity that I'm supposed to do this, just do that. A burning bush would do it for me. Like if a burning bush was like a middle of nowhere talking to me, I'd be like, okay, got it. But Moses still has doubts. Like, no, I'm not, I'm the wrong guy. I've been hiding out for a long time. I'm not this eloquent speaker, this and that. And, and, and God says, no, like you're the guy 
and he's still, and there's, he's still resistant, still resistant. Finally, he's like, fine, fine. I will give you this awesome guy named Aaron. And that's how I got my name. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I said, <laughs> of course, we, we, <laughs> we have to not uh, forget about Aaron and the whole golden calf thing. That was like a little bit of a negative for Aaron. <laughs> yes. You know, that was, he was, he was off there, but otherwise earlier in his career, uh, God provided a way. And so where Moses felt disqualified and like, I'm not the guy, God was like, you are the guy and I'm going to provide for you. Similarly, when I was like looking to lead a group, I didn't have anybody in my mind, which was part of the like, either I deliberately pray about who, like God bringing me people and bringing people to mind that I can invite, or I'm just going to use this as an excuse to not lead. And so, you know, if you're, if you're on the tail end of a group and you're thinking like, I would lead, but I don't know anybody, or I don't have anybody that I could like, then if you feel led, then pray about it and ask God to reveal. Cause it's not you that's going to do the work on attracting people. Like come over here. I got this awesome group. You know, we hang out, we talk about things and I'm super fun to listen to. Like nobody's going to buy into that. What they're going to say yes to is the work of God in your life and the work of God calling them and saying, yeah, I want you to do a year with this because I have a plan and a purpose for it. And I've seen that to be true on the tail end of a year. So we just have to recognize when we are being lied to about not being qualified and stiff arm that Joan piece and say yes. That's that's kind of where I feel where I land. Yeah, you know, it's uh, you used the story of Moses and Aaron. I, I would say my example this last week was more the uh, story of Saul. And so Saul is anointed, a very ordinary guy. When he gets anointed to be king, he says to Samuel, um, but why would you choose me? I'm from the least of the tribes of Israel from Benjamin, right? So he's automatically disqualifying himself. And Saul's like, I mean, Samuel's like, no, you're going to be the next king. And realize that when he was anointed king, and again, I don't want this to be a recap of the session podcast that Emily and I did, but, but this is, this is important stuff. And, and I, listen, I have done the podcast. I, I wrote the study and I have led it many times and it still was something that Satan attacked me in. So we can hear it yeah. more, right? It's not like we 100%. don't need to hear this. So when Saul's anointed King, what's he doing? He's out finding his dad's donkeys. <laughs> like <Yeah>. it's crazy. <laughs> like that's ordinary. That's like, uh, I mean, what would that be the equivalent of? Like, I, I don't, I don't even know. Like it's, it, it was not, it was not something that I think a kid was like, yeah, man, my dad let me go get the donkeys. <laughs> I think it was pretty yeah. miserable. Maybe and, cutting the grass. Not yeah, cutting the grass. It wasn't a high level thing. Right. And so then he's anointed King and then he makes excuses, but, but so, so he goes to this dinner and then he gets anointed and the Holy Spirit comes on him and people are like dancing and prophesying over him. So he has this amazing experience and he lives in it for a little bit. Right. And then they, in, in first Samuel, uh, one or first Samuel 10, 21, they, they go through the formality of anointing him as the, he was already anointed king, but they go through the formality of like, uh, almost, um, uh, electing like him. Yeah, it was like an election almost. Like they brought yeah. everybody forward. Official and, ceremony. Like, yeah. And so they brought everybody forward, and then they had to choose which guy. So they say, then they brought forward the tribe of Benjamin. We just said that's where Saul was from. Uh, clan by clan, and Matri's clan was taken. Finally, Saul, son of Kish, was taken. But when they looked for him, he was nowhere to be found. So they inquired further of the Lord, has the man come here yet? And the Lord said, yes, he has hidden himself among the luggage. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? And so here I am. Yeah, here so I am. Awkward. I know it is, but it's exactly where I was kind of getting the other day. Uh, and I didn't even, I didn't come close to getting there, but, uh, but, but that's my, my mind was allowing me to go there. It was like, oh, even after all that God's done with ordinary movement, I, I was going to get to the point that I was going to start hiding in the luggage. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And so I just, I just want to encourage people with my story to say, um, just because you have doubts doesn't mean that God's not going to use you and, and doesn't want to use you. That's just Satan trying to keep you from doing what God has for your life. Yes. And I, I don't, I'm not saying it will never happen again. I'm not saying I'll never have those, those doubts or those feelings again. But I think the fact that we have these studies and that we've read these scriptures and that we've been reminded of this and, and because we profess that we're ordinary is not like, it's not us. Um, it's a war cry. 
<laughs> it's a word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm ordinary, so God can use me. And, and I just want other people to feel that way as well. So when they feel that way, it will actually well something up inside them and make them uh, want, want to walk out what God has had for them versus the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not us. Like it's ordinary guys plus God's calling that produce extraordinary results. That's right. And so it's nothing in ourself that is going to drum up this, you know, success, like success for the, for the kingdom of God looks different than it does on a, on a uh, profit and loss. Right. It's like right. God has different metrics that he wants us to, to weigh. And so when we look at the world and we look at what success looks like there, it's notoriety and money and recognition and all this stuff. And God's saying, no, 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 I, I care about this over here. So just tap into me as a resource and I'll lead. And I think where we feel those moments of, um, I guess, disqualification or inadequacy, and we feel like we want to hide out amongst the luggage when they call our name. Um, it's just us getting focused on the wrong thing. Like we're not focused on where we need to and where God's calling. We're focused on what it looks like or what, you know, oh, it doesn't measure up or this or that. And it's a temptation that I think all of us have, um, you know, regularly. And I think it's good. I think it's good to remind ourselves to keep our eyes on where God has called, which is why full circle it is important to stay tapped in and be able to hear his voice yes. and know when he's calling. Cause then we can be sure we can be sure of what we're doing and have a community of believers, intentional relationship, people that you're doing disciple discipleship with. I mean, it was great that I was able to say, and be open, be, be willing to talk about it. I could have held it mm-hmm. in. Right. Mm-hmm. So pat myself on the back. <laughs> I was vulnerable. <laughs> right. No, but if I didn't have the, if I didn't have people around me that will speak truth to me, Mm-hmm. And I didn't have the ability to, to, to feel vulnerable around somebody that wouldn't judge me. Then that's, that's what discipleship is. That's what intentional relationship is. That's this band of brothers or band of sisters that we're creating uh, in our groups. Uh, and then going forward outside of our groups that I could say something to Alex and he could immediately say, well, that's silly, Jeremy. You wrote a session on that. And he more or less did say that. Yeah. He's like, come on. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. why God called you. That's exactly yes. why he didn't use um, Craig Rochelle to do this is because he wanted you to do this. And, and he needed an ordinary guy. He didn't say this, yes. but that, that, that can't figure out how to use proper words and <laughs> communicate well so that other ordinary people could say, well, if that dude can do it, then I can do it. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. uh, it, you know, it reminds me of one of my favorite verses, which I think epitomizes uh, what we're talking about, which is first Corinthians one twenty six through 31. It says, this is Paul speaking. And he says, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. And I think this is important. Because as we talk about ordinary men and ordinary women, uh, that first sentence is really important. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Now, I'm pretty sure uh, Craig Rochelle was pretty ordinary when he was called. He seems extraordinary now because the the power of the Holy Spirit comes on someone and anoints them. They're going to look very impressive. But the, the, Mm -hmm. the reality is it's when he was called. I would like to look back at his life when he was called. And I just, you know, I just listened to one of his sermons and, he wasn't a believer up until I think high school or college. He he mm-hmm. was he was like um, <clears throat> he, he was, was running and gunning. In, he was trapped in pornography. He was you know all those things. Like when he was called, you know he he wasn't much in 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 the in the eyes of what believers would see, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's important that we look at somebody that 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 is very anointed and gifted that we can't say, well, they weren't an ordinary guy because they probably were and they were called. But anyhow, yes. so it says, not many of you were wise by human standards. <laughs> That's myself. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. So that, why? No one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. This is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, Mm. it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Lord. That's right. Yeah. And so I don't think anybody can ever look at ordinary movement and say, well, I think it was great because the founder was great. No, that will never be said. (laughs) It's going to be like, man. God really moved in that in that organization because I know the founder <laughs> and and trust me that dude 
I don't know. That dude takes little dogs on airplanes. That's right. <laughs> he is no one to oh, associate. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh gosh. yeah, that reminds me. Um, I I love that. I love that that uh, where we find our confidence, where we find um, basically our identity. And I think Paul does a good job of this, like in multiple places. Um, you know, he says, you know, here's a trustworthy saying, First Timothy, um, that deserves full acceptance. Jesus came into the world to save uh, sinners of who I'm the worst. So, so, and he talks more about, uh, similarly, it's, it's throughout, you know, his writings, but in um, Philippians, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize, which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So dude is saying like straight up, like, hey, I know I'm I'm writing to you. I'm I'm preaching to you. I'm saying this. But like, hear me. This has nothing to do with me. What I'm sharing with you is what God has put on my heart. Without him, I would be lost. And without him, I would I would be nothing. Like I I owe all of this truth and all of this, you know, this this gift that I'm giving um, these words to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has done a good work in my heart. And I feel like every ordinary man, every ordinary woman has the same exact story. Like we can, with our competence, share that with others and say, it's it's not me, it's Christ in me that enables me to be able to share with you. And so from there, you, I feel like you lead with humility and, and you can't lose. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, as you were reading that, I was looking at that verse, uh, Philippians three thirteen through 14. And, you know, uh, Paul is known as, you know, the preacher of grace, right? And so much so that a lot of Paul's followers got so enthralled in grace. It was like, shall we send more? So base, so grace will abound, right? It's like, I want to send more so I can have more grace in my life. And Paul was like, no, no. <laughs> but so much so that James wrote the book, which is all centered more on works, right? And almost to counteract, it's like, hey, grace without works or faith without works is dead, right? And mm. but, but here's what's interesting uh, is he says, Forgetting, forgetting what is behind and straining, right? What is mm-hmm. it? Think about straining for something. Straining towards what is ahead. And then the next verse, I press on towards the goal to win the prize, right? So it's like, I, this is where I will bring the challenge in. High grace, high challenge, right? Yeah. So here's the challenge. If you're, if you're a believer and part of your walk is not straining towards what's ahead, and pressing on towards the goal to win the prize, mm. then then think about what that should look like in your life, and mm. and again, unabashedly, I let it let it be you leading an ordinary men, ordinary women's group, but if there's a better process and system out there that you know of, do that, <laughs> do whatever's best. <laughs> like mm. this is just what we have to offer. If you have something else that helps you do that, then utilize that. But but I would kind of wrap up with saying this, and if you have more, Aaron, obviously we can keep going, but I would kind of wrap up with saying uh, what, number one, what are the lies that Satan has put into your head that are keeping you from taking the next step? Mm-hmm. Um, ha- have you been in an ordinary men, ordinary men, women's group uh, years ago, and maybe at the time thought you would do something, and and you haven't for the last couple of years, and you're like, oh, there's my get out of jail free card, like they forgot about me. <laughs> Well, it's, I haven't forgot about you. It's not my conviction to have you to, to disciple others. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. So if he's doing something in your heart right now, I, I would just ask you to reach out to us and see how we can partner together. Or if you have something else on your heart that, that you feel like God's calling you to do and that you feel like we could help you in that journey, reach out to us and we'll help you there too. It doesn't have to be our organization. We just want to see disciples making disciples. And however we can help you do that, we want to do that. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think, um, we were not promised for, you know, our walk to just be a, you know, comfort zone, like, oh, okay, follow Jesus and everything will be super comfortable, super easy and not difficult for you going forward. Like we actually hear the opposite. Like we will face trials. We will face tribulations. We will face, um, things where God asks us to do something And my fear and not fear. I would just call it maybe a healthy fear is like, 
I don't want to say no when God has clearly called me to do something because I know that his will will be done. And I think he invites us as ordinary men and women to be a part of it and be a part of what he's doing in this small bit of time that we have on this earth. He invites us to be a part of the plan that he's be a part of the picture that he's weaving, that he's painting. And if we opt out, we say, no, nah, um, I know like this is a big, big game. We've been working all season for this. The Super Bowl's here, but I'm going to sit the bench, you know, like I know you want me to start, but uh, I'm going to chill over here if that's cool next to the water cooler. I feel like we basically just uh, traded abundant life and where God can really move and work and do extraordinary things through us for less um, abundance and less uh, fulfillment. And when we, when we feel like, oh man, I'm just not feeling fulfilled and maybe it's work, I need to pursue something else or maybe I need to make more money or me to do this. Like for me, every single answer has always come up void except for continued pursuit of the Holy Spirit and, and, and time with the Lord and just getting vulnerable. Like even this week, like making a dedicated, like, oh, I've been neglecting quiet time because I get, I'm getting into my emails too early. Like I care more about emptying my inbox than I do spending time with the Lord, like being convicted of that and getting in, like already feeling the fruit of that from just a couple of days in the week. Mm -hmm. And so on, that's on a micro level, but on a macro level, doing that over the course of our existence, what can God do through us that we would otherwise opt out of if we if we do not obey the call to make disciples and abide in him? So high challenge, uh, high grace, because we know that life is crazy, but that doesn't exempt you from doing what you can or what God's called you to do. So I would say, let's get it. Let's do this is, what, is how Jeremy would say it. And I might have said it wrong, but, you know, I'm still new here. So, yeah, you almost got it right. Yeah. It was close. Eventually, eventually I'll, I'll finish out with it. And then yeah, you, you can, will. Yeah, then you'll you get can it learn, right. You can learn how to say it right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, just recapping, um, we're called. We should be obedient uh, to the call, regardless of if we feel uh, inefficient. Stop hiding the luggage. Stop hiding. Uh, behind excuses because excuses are no excuses and let us know like what what's God saying to you right now what do you feel like he's leading you to do whether it's om leading om joining om or something else uh let us know what you're feeling like God's calling you to so we can pray with you pray alongside of you support you um and just be a part of that community so um yeah. leave us a comment let us know how we can connect with you yeah i mean we're about the kingdom this isn't like we have to like create this this wall around ordinary men, ordinary movement. Right? Yeah, yeah, no way, man. We have open doors. Like if we if we can help somebody else somewhere build the kingdom, then we are doing what God has called us to do. Like we are yeah. completely open handed. So if there's something we can help you with, that's what we want to be. We want to be those people, and uh, we want to be kingdom. We want to be about the about the kingdom, not about our organization. That's silliness. The organization is only to help the, build the kingdom. So. Um, I, I would agree. And then I would just remind you that no matter where you're at, don't think because you have some doubt or that Satan is telling you some lie that uh, you don't speak well enough, you don't look good enough, you don't have this, you don't have that, you don't have the wealth, you don't have the influence. God should use somebody else because they already have it. No, that's not how he works. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just that's what happened to me. I, I started to believe that lie for a couple of days and then I had some people kick me around and get me back in. So yeah, no, sir. Yeah. Don't let that happen. I don't even know if this is relevant, but I'm supposed to read this verse. I feel like Go I think ahead. it's relevant and it goes back to like pressing on, you know, um, straining towards another Paul verse, right? <laughs> I just love the dude. And it's, uh, the need for self-discipline. And I think, you know, once we get past that point, there is a need where we're going to, we're running a race. Mm. And what are you running towards, right? And so I, I'm going to end with this. I'm not going to end with let's do this. That's how yes. you say it, by the way. Let's do this. Um, I don't know what you said, but it wasn't the same. Let's do this. <laughs> let's get it. No, oh. oh, man, so close. Do it. All right, here's the verse. Uh, and we're just going to end on this. Um, and hopefully it's it's pertinent for someone. It's yes. 1 Corinthians 9, uh, 24. It says, Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? 
run it in such a way to get the prize. Once again, he's talking about running, right? He's not talking about sit around. No, run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes, listen to these words, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that we do it. So he's saying that we do it. What do we do? We compete in the games and we have strict training, but the game is building the kingdom, right? They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, what does he say? I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight. I love these words, man. Mm. Like (laughs) Paul is my man. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be qualified for the prize. Man, that's it. That's it. Let's run. Let's, let's run. That's what I want. I want to run with people. Yeah. I'm trying to win. Yeah. Yes. For the sake of Christ. I love it. I do too. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting us share today. And if you said that, uh, I was going to tear up more than zero, you lost because I didn't. Yeah, man. The counter was low. So maybe next time. (laughs) All right. See you guys. Thanks.